I'm going to show you the extension star fill made by Scape for Genially and it allows you to have clickable areas um, that then attract another object. So this object flies around and as you can see you can also set it up that it leaves this trail behind and if you click the places in the right order a certain object will come up. So I'll show you an other, another example. Um, here's a shorter version of this so you have to press the uh, different pictures in the right order of smallest to largest so if I do that and we start from here our little turtle moves over there then this one is the second one and then the third one is here and if I get them in the right order then it says oh it's high time I can also do this in the wrong order then something else happens if I do uh, let's say this one then this one and this one now it says start again and in this case the little um, cock symbol here in the middle is the restart button so if I click there the turtle returns to it and here we've just got a little hint that we have to go from smallest to largest I'm going to show you now how to make an activity like this. So here is my slide with just some objects on there. Nothing is connected yet. So I need to go to the um, template here and copy everything that's on there. Some of them are optional, um, but for now I'm showing you what happens when you use all of them. Okay, so um, you've got, first of all, you've got this big background object which is invisible um, but if you look on your preview over here you can see now the whole slide oops, uh, the whole slide is gray because it's covered up by this invisible object you need to have this in the background to be able to see the trail and for it to work properly so we need to have it in the background but for now I put it to the side otherwise it makes it harder to pick up other objects so but I need to remember to put it back on in the end okay then uh, the most important one is this command here which is the object that's going to fly so I want to group this with my world and um, if I don't want to be able to see it you can just turn the transparency down um, up and then we won't be able to see it so this is now going to move then the next most important thing is the destination and the click area so um, here click area and the destination so they can be grouped with the same object but they don't have to so let's say my first destination is this ring so I group them together but I want the object to fly there when I press the button so I group this as far as I can tell you can't group several click areas with the same object so it needs it would need to have three different buttons to fly to three different places um, so for the next one I'm just going to say that it will um, fly when I click on the ring so first of all I've duplicated the destination so I've got first destination and the second destination and it will fly to them in that order and let's actually ungroup this again I can duplicate so copy and paste really um, this click zone but I need to group this with a different object so let's say we want it to happen when I group it with this ring so I group this ring with destination 2 and click zone 2 then we've got uh, this one this needs to be grouped with the object that pings up when one of the destinations is reached so this heart will show when the first ring is reached so I could just again copy and paste um, to also show when the second ring is reached and so on let's get rid of these other hearts okay then we've got this command um, this is the reset so I group it with this but be aware when you press the reset button the object will fly to the reset button and not to the place where it was before so even though my world starts out over here if re reset is pressed 
it will then start from there. So if you always wanted to start in the same place, you need to make sure that the reset button is in the same place as it starts out. Um, but it doesn't need to be grouped with a word. So it could be just a small uh, symbol or something, and then you could have a, a larger kind of reset um, sign next to it to make it clear where you need to click. Okay, then um, I've got the red button, which is my fail button or lost button. So I want to group this with the object that comes up if the activity is failed. So if the objects are clicked in the wrong order. And then we've got the green one, which is the well done one. So you don't need to have an, a fail object. So if you just want something to fly around your slide, and there isn't a really a right or wrong answer, you don't need to add them. But if it's an activity where students learn something, then obviously it's good for them to uh, know if they've got it right. Or if it's part of a game, like an escape room game, then you might want the um, arrow to the next slide to come up or maybe a code to get into uh, the next slide, uh, like a passcode. Um, so you could group them with the winning object. Okay, then we've got the, the motive. This is also optional. This changes the color of the trail. So I could group it with this nice rainbow trail here or sparkly trail. Or if I just wanted to have a color, I can just insert, um, insert a, a shape and then choose the color. So let's say I wanted a, a yellow trail I just group it with this yellow object over here and that's the color it's going to be. Okay, and then these two commands here, you just need to keep them in the corner somewhere. They will be invisible. So the first one is how big the trail is going to be. So if you make it smaller, it will be a really small line or you can make it a really thick line. So let's go with 10. Just play around with different numbers to see what it does. The second one asks, do you want your line to be uh, a dotted line or not? So you need to say it in French. So either we, oui, if you want it to be dotted or no, if you don't want it. So let's go with we oui so we can see what it looks like. Okay, and this yellow box here, it will also be invisible, but it needs to be on the slide for all the different formulas to work. So don't overlook this, even though it's not quite clear at first what it does, but it just needs to be there. It's kind of the background uh, formula going on. Okay, and then we need to remember to put our big canvas area there again, and we put it in the background. Okay, let's try it out. So the first one was connected to the button. So I press the button and it's now flying there. And as you can see, I've got my dotted line and it's yellow. And as soon as the ring was reached, my object came up. The second one, um, the, the, the click area was grouped with the circle. So I need to click on the circle for it to fly there. And this was the right order. So I get my reward object. 